if you're in a classroom setting, you're, you're not setting like the best example. A lot of kids look up to you because you're a funny person, but try and use that as like a beneficial thing for other students, you know? Yeah. It's little things like that. Stop being so quick to send the, the black kids or people of color to the contact group. I was told, oh yeah, like she has issues with her mental health, but like if a person of color was acting the exact same way, it's just like, oh, they're just difficult. They're just a difficult student. Positional. Teachers are challenged with a lot more than I think we, we tend to pay attention to. We may be younger, you know? Again, prefrontal cortex, you know? Not, <laughs> not there yet, not there yet. But you know, like, we have some valid stuff to say. Yeah. And, you know? Do it for real Fridays where you'll hear the brilliance, wisdom, and insights of young people who know what's good. Okay, well, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> got a little heated. Yes. No, let it loose, let it loose. Yeah, um, what do teachers need to know yeah. in order to create a space like this? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say something we talk about a lot, remember your why. I don't know who's tech checking in with our teachers. I know it's just year in, get to school in, in August or whenever they start, and in June, go to summer, do it again. Same, I've, I've had teachers that have taught me the exact same curriculum that they taught, like, people 10 years ago. The exact, I'm doing the exact same assignment that like it has been in the log for the past four, five, six, seven years and I've said it before, like why is it the exact same assignment four years down the road? Why hasn't it changed? Like why have I graduated from Suzuki but I know Melissa's doing the exact same assignments that I did. <laughs> why, why, why is that still happening, right? Like, like, like Hayden said, change the curriculum, like update it as you go, as best you can with the, with the guidelines that you're given and just Remember why you're there. Like, it's an important job. We've already said it. The way you connect with different students, the same teacher that connected with you, Aaron, in history is not going to be able to connect with every student on that level, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You can't connect with every single one. You're seeing 20, 30, 40 kids a year. You're not going to get that one-on-one, -on -one, like, this is my family member. This is someone that I have, like, personally mentored. But if you remember your why, you bring who you are to the table, you're going to impact students regardless. Like I've, mm -hmm. I've, in middle school, grade seven, I had a teacher that she had set up an entire like bookshelf in the back of our classroom, put down a carpet, like bright and colorful, big puffy pillows. Like it was a whole, like a whole production back there pretty much. Mm -hmm. And my entire, the entire grade seven wing knew about that classroom. Just because she had brought herself to the table. Like she was decorating the door for every holiday. Mm -hmm. She was, she was that teacher that put pencils out on the table at the on the first day and put down mm -hmm. like a, a little like name tag and you you decorate it for a little bit she gave you colors like she was that teacher and she didn't do anything special that she had to do one-on-one -on -one with anyone it was just something she did for the whole class and because of that the entire wing knew who she was mm -hmm. simply because she brought herself to the table so I think teachers remembering like why they're teaching and remembering that like their individual personality it shows and it connects to students in ways that maybe one-on-one -on -one never will just that little thing can be like, oh, like there was a teacher in my school that that's kind of cool. Like maybe I can go talk to her one time, right? So just remembering your why and remembering like your personality, like it matters. Don't just be another gray door down the hallway. Don't just be another like Miss Blank on the the chalkboard. Like show them who you are. Show who you're. Like show your personality because that's what makes us in this space individual leaders. Mm -hmm. I could say like seven different things about each of you off one day of meeting you because you bring who you are to the table. And I think teachers sometimes forget that getting caught up in the same the same assignment year in year out every september it's this assignment's going to come first and every october it's this is assignment number four they get caught up in that and then you just forget that like you're here for a reason you started off where matt is wanting to teach brand new fresh off like fresh out of teaching school like that's where you started off and that's where you want to be 10 years down the line 20 years down the line so yeah that's me can we give my hack two claps <laughs> Um, for me, I definitely have to say um, teachers have to understand that like we're all just you know human at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Because I know for myself, um, you know, I, as a younger you, like, <laughs> I was I was problematic, you know. I was causing trouble in the ca classroom, you know. I was doing some nonsense. I wasn't listening, you know. I was I had all the madam in the classroom, you know. We're, we're having crazy times, but a lot of times I'll get paged by a teacher. I'll get yelled at, and I'm like, wow, like. You know, I'm like, I'm 13. Like, you're like 48. Like, I'm like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like, I'm like, what are you doing? But you're right. <laughs> you know? And like, you know what? I'll be vexed about it after. But I was like, you know, like, you can just really like, approach me different. But then like, another teacher like, you know, that like, you know, I'm still doing this. I'm doing this nonsense to every class. I'm doing it in every classroom regardless. <laughs> you're consistent. You know what I like? <laughs> <laughs> but then like, I had a, like, a teacher named Mr. Badger. Like, 
guy was, he was, he was a cool one, you know. This guy really mm-hmm. brought me aside and showed me, like, like you know, I understand like, your age. You know, he's trying to give me one of those talks. Like, you know, you understand. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you already understand me? Like, you're old too. Like, you know? But he's like, nah, like, you know? Like, but he just showed me, like, we're, we're, we're in this together, you know? Like, where you are, I've been there. Mm-hmm. And I'll show you how the path goes to. I'll, I can, I, he just court, like, critiqued me on, like, how to better myself. And I just mm-hmm. have to, you know, like, appreciate that from him. But like a lot of us teachers would like just yell at me and just be like, you know, you're just a problem child. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm mm-hmm. once you go to the office, you're not my problem anymore. That's how a lot of teachers That's felt. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember being like in school suspension, not real suspension, in school yeah. suspensions, <laughs> just because the teachers just didn't want me in their class and for the other classes I could go to. But just that one specific class I wasn't allowed to go for like over a month. Just because my friend teacher just she just didn't want me in the classroom no more. I was like, What? But mm-hmm. no, nah, like a lot of teachers feel like since they're older, like they're better than us in a sense or like that we're invalid and i feel like a lot of you need to understand like no we may be younger you know again prefrontal cortex you know not <laughs> not there yet not there yet but you know like we have some valid stuff to say yeah, and, you know yeah. as long as you listen to us like just listen to a conversation you know whether like you know during lunchtime or whatever like you know like th- that goes a long way i'll mm-hmm. say it goes a long way can we um i want to speak on that because many teachers are quick to send the oh do my bad Many teachers are quick to send students, specifically black students or students of color, to like the contact room or the office as soon as like they misbehave. And doing that, the kids are missing out on yes. on class time. Yeah. Yes. And then is then they're quick to put us on like the the list of like people with like what I don't know how to say what is it like like the yeah IEPs yeah, are like IEPs, yeah. or maybe or like the like, blue list. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Things like that, but it's like. It's not our fault, and then we could do a small little something, something, something that like maybe my white peer would do, and then they're still in the classroom just little talk. But if I was to do it, it's straight to the contact room, straight to the office, maybe a call home, in school suspension, like you said. They don't want to help us, you know. Like it's like they're there, like I said earlier, they're there to teach and then send us off home. They don't want to help us become like the better version of us, or like that's really just a better version of us. They just want us to, want to teach, and that's my problem here because. In my middle school, I know a lot of my friends, including me as well, if I cause a little bit of ruckus in my classroom, I'll send to the contact room. Luckily, my mother in middle school became a teacher at my middle school, so you know, I had to fix up a little bit. <laughs> I had to fix up a little bit still. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit still. Like my, sh- my hat was like this. <laughs> I had to put up a little bit high. But, um, but even then though, I was still... <laughs> Even then, I was still like kind of called into the contact room, and my mom, my mom dealt with it. <laughs> That's I'm gonna say. Um, but connecting with the students is being able to tell them like, yo, like understand your class clown and funny like that. This can be maybe a passion you're passionate about later on, like a comedian. Yes. But right now, yes. like you could do this at recess time. But come on, like Kate, and you're like you're in a classroom setting. You're you're not setting like the best example. A lot of kids look up to you because you're a funny person. But try and use that as like a beneficial thing for other students. You know, yeah. it's little things like that. Stop being so quick to send the, the black kids or the people of color to the contact room because you're, you're just missing out on the learning and then we're going into high school and not knowing a thing. Why? Yeah, because yeah. we're in the contact room all the time. And then they're sending the work. Like they're not <laughs> teaching the work but they're sending it to the to the contact room with us to be done. To be done. Like yeah. yo, like what is two plus two? Eight? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Well, can I add on to that oh, real sorry. quick? No, no, no. I just kind of like wanted to add on to what you're saying specifically when it talks about like black mental health issues as well, right? Because I find like just from the experiences that I've heard that a lot of like um, black students, their mental health gets often dismissed. It's viewed as like, oh, they're just acting out. They're just angry. They're just this, they're just that. It's like, you know, for me, like I was told, oh yeah, like she has issues with her mental health. But like if a person of color was acting the exact same way, it's just like, oh, they're just difficult. They're just a difficult student. Like when are we gonna start taking you know, black students' mental health seriously because mm-hmm. it is just as important. It actually needs to be addressed more at this point, right? Um, yeah, no, I just think it's very important to keep your students' mental health in mind at yeah. all points because you really never know what they're going through. Yeah. Two claps. Ooh, about time. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Love you, Melissa. So now I got a lot to say because everybody mm. was just dropping a bunch of facts. So um, I definitely think, kind of like most institutions that we see, there's some good apples and there's some bad apples. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I've been fortunate to have like some good teachers who have been there for me, but then there's those teachers and you're like, like I just don't agree. We just don't get along. So um, 
I definitely say one thing I would tell teachers is kind of like what Kaden was saying. Kaden was saying, sorry, change the curriculum. Like you know that you have to teach this, but teach it in a way that sticks. Mm -hmm. If that makes sure. sense. Like even at school camps, when we're talking about self-respect and leading by example. We don't just say self-respect and define it and say, write this down, this is what you need to do. We share experiences and we share mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. And I feel like parents and teachers get caught up in stuff like that when they'll tell you something, but they won't break it down for you. And that's why we have people who are like confused and who are ignorant and who have no knowledge on certain things because there's no one to break it down to them, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, another thing I'd say is just understanding your students. I feel like Teachers put themselves on this pedestal, and a lot of them, I don't know how many times I've heard this line, but it's like, I have my career, I know what I'm doing, yeah. what are you doing? But it's like, okay, but I mean, you're here for me. And one thing that really gets wild, like, that confuses me is I'm like, you're a teacher, you see students every day, so why are you teaching students if you don't like kids? Literally. And that's, that always sticks with me because I'm like, you're here for the money. And once yeah. I realize you're here for the money, like, I just back off because I'm like, you get your. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, you get your paycheck based off of what you're teaching me. So if you're going to teach me, do it right. Make mm -hmm. your money worthwhile. Like, you come to work, you're miserable, first of all. Mm -hmm. Let's you're, talk about it, though. Let's talk about the coffee breath. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're up in my face with your Hot stick breath. breath. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you're gonna teach me, please make it stick because no way I'm calling you over here and you're gonna come with your breath and I'm not gonna get anything. Like that. <laughs> so I feel like those are definitely some things. Another thing I'd say is just like, on uh, just they have this big opportunity. Like, you know, those teachers, those teachers that you spoke about and that Mahat spoke about, who stuck with them. Don't, you're grown, and those you're teachers grown. still stay <laughs> with you. Yeah, so years I, later. So I think it's just like, even those teachers who maybe they don't connect with every student, but when they connect with that one student, they plant a seed. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for teachers, like you could, you could teach so much, you could do all this, and you could teach the curriculum to the extent that it needs to be done to 100%. But if your students are just walking away with how to do algebra, like then you never really teach them. I feel like school's a learning opportunity, and not only to learn the curriculum, but to learn who you are, what you want to do, exactly. and you can't get mm -hmm. that if you're sitting in a classroom like a robot writing stuff down. Mm -hmm. So when I say plant a seed, like you need to instill that in your people, because take in, we see teachers during school more than we see our families. That's mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna be in a space with you, I better be learning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you're not, and, and like what Kaden was saying, like I come there and you just make it, you make me miserable. Yeah. To the point where I'm here doing work that I don't want to do. And that's why so many students don't have the opportunity to be great. Because they're sitting there. The teacher is not making the lesson fun. You're in a miserable place. Maybe with people you don't like. I don't know. But at the end of the day, like... You could, you have this opportunity to really make a kid's life. You mm -hmm. make or break students. That's literally right. your job as yeah. a teacher. You either teach us or you ruin us. And that's it. And so many teachers just constantly ruin students. I know yeah. I had this one principal. Yeah. When I talk about Peel, I call Peel on this man. I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Times, I know exactly so what you're talking about. And I'll do it again. <laughs> and I'll do it again. No, like the way that, I don't know they find these teachers like they definitely just walk around downtown Brampton and say hey do you want a job because there's no way that these teachers are teaching me when they don't have the knowledge they don't have the wisdom and then the ones that do they they just belittle their students and another thing last thing i'm gonna say you can learn so much from kids yeah as a chance counselor the stuff i learn on a day-to-day -day, i'm like wait no it makes you it makes you're a youth yeah like and you're telling me this like literally imagine me dropping facts on like Dinosaurs, and I'm like, how? No, wow. 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 I was like, like what I'm doing? Because it wasn't in school. <laughs> what do you know about the periodic table? <laughs> exactly. So one thing I definitely say is listen to your students. Everyone yeah. learns, and everyone can be a leader. So mm. when you just belittle your students and you don't really give them that opportunity to speak out or branch out, and it's just straight curriculum, then I mean, what do you expect when they turn out? Boring and weird, like you know what I mean. Yeah, like, that's back the torch. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Before I go, two cops. Are we, are we good? Quick, quick point. Quick point. Um, I was just gonna say, just to speak off of that. Um, every student is like a chain reaction. Like you're, like the next teacher you get is gonna get what the last teacher provided to you. Mm -hmm. So like when you speak about, like when you said the point of like you either make or break like your students. 
like teachers need to realize if you're teaching grade three, that's a result of the teachers that taught grade two and grade one in kindergarten. You're teaching grade 12, that's all the teachers that these kids have been in interactions with their entire life. So like keeping that in mind that like, like the students are gonna come into the classroom expecting what they've been seeing in other classrooms. Mm -hmm. So your classroom needs to be the one that, that changes that, yeah. that mindset for them. Mm -hmm. Your classroom needs to be the one that's not just like every other class that they've mm -hmm. been in. Cause they've been in a lot of classrooms, right? And the last thing like, Students don't know anything like a lot of teachers come with the assumption that like we have an understanding of things beforehand mm -hmm. And that builds that disconnect like you've been teaching well algebra for seven years now Obviously, you know how to teach it like you know what the principles are You know what the things are but students don't know those things mm -hmm. So when you teach me something expecting me to kind of have an understanding before or you give me like a 30 minute review period And I'm supposed to remember everything from the past semester or two years ago Literally. Like it builds a huge disconnect when you when teachers come into a classroom with the assumption that students know more than they actually know. So like when you spoke about Melissa breaking it down for students, like you do need to break it down for students. They, they need that again. They need to build that connection again from the bottom. And obviously you can only break it down so much, but when you force students to go places like counting on you or like after school programs that they yes. may not even have access to, it makes that connection so much more difficult to build. So like you need to cut, like give students that benefit of the doubt, that like mm -hmm. grace period of like getting back into the flow of things and then teaching them things as if they don't already know them. Exactly. Because then you can actually teach it to them. Mm -hmm. can, like they're like a clean slate. It's mm -hmm. not something that's already got chalk all over it. Like, mm -hmm. And there you go. Oh, this oh math. It's actually <laughs> tough because man's going to have math the first year and the first semester. And then you have a whole year with no oh, math. Oh, then the whole yeah. summer break. <laughs> math the last semester again. And, yeah. then like, and then you have like, and then you do like a review test as if man don't remember it. Wait though, because. And they have like a review test. And then they're going to expect you to remember it. And like, wait though. I had math literally almost two years ago. What, what, like, <laughs> yeah, like, 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 I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, sorry, man. It's all good. Two cops. Uh, one last thing I'll say is that um, if you're a teacher and you teach your students more than you learn from them, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely doing it wrong. Uh, because even if it's not information that students are teaching you yeah. about the world or about life, like they're teaching you about their own lives. Mm -hmm. That's where the relationship is coming mm -hmm. from, right? That's what you should be focused on learning. Um, if you don't have patience, find a new job. Right. Because you need patience. You need to be able to talk to the kids that are wilding out. Them. And you need to be able to get to their level and talk to them. You know, you don't wild out, but you show them the appropriate way to deal with the situation. Yeah. You're going to be freaking out at me? Okay, let's talk. Relax. You know what I mean? I'll control your energy with my energy. Um, and, you know, one thing about what Mahag was saying is, and I felt this. It's a challenge, man. Like, look, when I like, I was working with grade nines, and we're expected to teach these grade nines how to write, you know, start writing paragraphs and essays and stuff. Yeah. I got kids in my class that can't write a sentence. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm like, man, you're supposed to know this in like the fourth grade. Yeah. What happened between grade three and grade nine? Where was the help? Where was the right? Um, and that's a struggle because yeah. then it's like what? But then in the same class. I've got one kid who's struggling to write a sentence, but I got another kid who's writing university papers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do I find a way to creatively design a lesson for you two and everyone in between? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a challenge. Like I'm not discrediting anything anyone said. Everyone's yeah, made right. very good points. For sure. Um, being in that position though, teachers are challenged with a lot more than I think we, we tend to pay attention to. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's easy to say, you know, you like and I've right. sat and had the same opinions as everyone else, uh, where I'm like, y'all are blowing it, you're bricking, you're not doing things right, this is awful, we need to scrap it, throw it all in the garbage and change it. Yep. And it's like a lot of that is true, but a lot of it is also just overworked. Yep. Mm -hmm. A lack of time, yeah, a lack, lack of, of creativity mm -hmm. that's been beaten out of them because yeah. being forced to teach the curriculum that's mm -hmm. brutal yeah. and yeah. awful um, and outdated. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to be able to be creative. You have to move a little under the radar too and do mm -hmm. things, you know. Um, but it's, it's hard work. Yeah, uh, and if you hard. don't love it, if you're in it for the money, if you're in it for the summer break, get out. Yeah. yeah. Period. Because A, you're doing yourself the children and your whole community a disservice mm -hmm. right um but b it's miserable because yeah. you yeah. deal with things daily 
right? Like my favorite thing about working with kids and being a teacher is nothing will be the same. Yeah. Every That's single right. day is going to be different. There's going to be a different challenge. And if I anticipate, if I, and I've done it before, where I think I'm anticipating, okay, this kid's going to get me some trouble today. Or this kid, I'm wrong every time. <laughs> yeah. Every single time I'm wrong. Or maybe I'm right, but then they tell me, you know, they, they explain to me why, what's going on, and I'm like, oh, I can't even hold you for that. I understand how <laughs> yeah. you mm-hmm. Right? Um, so, you know, all of those things are really, really important. Uh, but it really, to me, it really just comes down to the relationship. Make mm-hmm. sure you're taking the time to care about your students and be yeah. adaptable um, and love what you do. Because mm-hmm. if you don't love yes. what you do in a job like that, it's going to beat you down until you hate it. Yeah. And then you're going to be the teacher that everyone here has just talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Be, yep. You don't want to be don't that, be that teacher. teacher. Don't be that teacher. I got to just don't email. email. Why is my name in the lunch we're, we're just going to go around one time. I'm going to say... Um, you know, one thing about, so one word um, to describe uh, the person to your left. Right? <laughs> right? The person to your left, and then you'll, we'll, this will be our closing statement, right? So one word to describe the person to your left and how you're checking out on a scale of 1 to 10. Okay. Oh. So... <laughs> <That's your boss. laughs> yeah. My one word is genius. Ah, okay. <laughs> and I'm checking out at a ten. Um, my one word to describe my hack, of course, beautiful. Aww. Uh, I'll be checking out as a, a ten. Thanks, my cousin. <laughs> um, my word to describe Aaron would definitely be. Empowered. That would be my word to describe. Now I'm about to cry again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm checking out at a ten. There's so many words I could use to describe Kate. <laughs> Wait, though. <laughs> no, no, no. Good words. Good words. Good words. Um, this is gonna be really basic, but just amazing. Thank you. I'm <laughs> <laughs> checking out at a ten. <laughs> So a whole heap of words for Melissa. <laughs> but one word to describe Melissa will be uh, no. <laughs> it will probably be passionate. Definitely passionate. <laughs> I'm checking out as a at a ten. As a ten. Yeah. As a ten. Um so got the pleasure. My one word to describe Mr. Orlando Bowen. That's my left. Yes. Would be a leader. Hmm. That's Leader. <laughs> and I'm checking out at a 10. Right, you're checking out at. So my one word to describe Matthew. <laughs> Not even props. Um, would definitely be just good. Like I know it's I a know, basic no, no, yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a deep word if you let but it sit. Good. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not going to get into it, but good. And I'm checking out at a 10. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, one word to use to describe Caden. You need those. <laughs> um, potential, like ah. limitless potential. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Like when I see Caden, I, I just the sky's the limit. It's crazy, and it's inspirational to see as well. Um, and me, man, I'm checking out at twelve. Yeah. I'm moving up to like, like a nice fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely checking out at twelve. A big word too. Oh. Um, definitely wholesome. Mm. Yeah. Take a word. Right. Yeah. <laughs> definitely wholesome. Um, Thanks, Kate. I'm gonna check out at, at a thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give a word for you. <laughs> Great. Aw, break the fourth wall. What's <laughs> <laughs> that thing? You drama people. Where's the drama kids? Yeah, but I'll also, it, but also the hack. Um. I don't like going back. <laughs> Outstanding. Mm. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Check, oh yeah, I'm checking out at a 13.5. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> um, for McFesty, goodness. How do I, what word do I give? I'm trying to think of the one that you gave me and how I can like... So how you could talk to you? You know, can't. balance that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I thought of that one, but I don't know if I really... You, what is, don't say that one. Okay, I'll, I'll go with just pure. 
Like flash pure. Oh, Mary, <laughs> Mary Holly. Oh, I'm gonna check out. I'll check out that. I'll keep it at my ten. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, um, Orlando, you know, mm-hmm. I've been a fan of you for a long time. <laughs> I've, actually been a, like, I've known Miss Bowen since grade nine, so I've really been a fan of you for a while, mm-hmm. and especially hearing your story. So, the word I have to give you is like iconic because mm-hmm. you yes. know, like, look, 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 look at this. You know, mm-hmm. like, this, is, this, is, this is Orlando <laughs> Bowen. <laughs> this is OBOT. This, is, this, is like, this, these smiles yeah. that happen, like, they're really generated mm-hmm. from you. you know? Yeah. So, you know, we just appreciate you for, uh, mm-hmm. you know, iconic. Could I change my word for Caden real quick? <sighs> Yeah, um, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you as well, Melissa. Um, my word for Melissa. Don't oh, <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to do just in one word. Loud. Um, <laughs> Melissa, you are an absolute gift. Well, just yeah. for Jolene, um, who was here earlier, I would call her curious. <laughs> in a very, no, like in no, a, a good way. Yeah. Yeah. I had a conversation yeah. with her earlier, earlier, and someone yeah. actually, McFest, we were talking about being 19 and feeling like you know everything. Yeah. Most teenagers, um, and I was this way. Uh, feel like you know you feel like you know what you need to know about the world that yes. you live in, and you know what you need to know to navigate it and that's it I know what I need I'm a teenager I don't need my parents to cook me food no more I don't need anyone yeah. to do anything for me I'm big I'm bought I can drive my own car <laughs> all these things right? um, but Jolene from the start she's just been curious she asked questions yeah. about like not for answers but for experiences mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like she tries to figure out what your experiences are and to me, I think that's important. And going back to what teachers do, like, experiences matter, man. That's how you learn things. Like, mm-hmm. y- you can tell me stats and throw stats at me all day. I'm not going to change the way I move or behave, mm-hmm. right? But if you tell me a story, like mm-hmm. your story, if you tell me something, that, an experience that I can connect to emotionally or makes me feel something or gives me chills, that's going to do something inside of a person that usually leads to a change in their behavior their mindset, uh, the way they approach things, and to me, that's what she seeks out. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the word I would use for a joke. Yeah. Awesome. Two claps. This is uh, this has been uh, the first for real Friday. <laughs> yeah, it got real. Right. <laughs> yeah, it sure did, and it will continue to be real because we'll continue to have conversations that are of value, where your voices are centered. Um, where your brilliance is put on display and where your heart is given an opportunity to pour into the hearts of other people who actually care Mm -hmm. right they need to know they need to hear your voice they need your perspective the world needs it right so I just you know I want to just thank you for being here not just here and now but for being here fully present ready to go Mm -hmm. thank you for making the decisions that allowed you to be here today, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So understanding that lives are absolutely on the line and you are one of the reasons why we do what we do, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So continue to pour into each other and and pour into the young people that we have the gift and honor of serving every single day. I right? appreciate you guys, love you guys, as you already know, and I'm so grateful. Mm-hmm.